You're listening to Patch Bay on TYM KRS. Welcome to Patch Bay, a conversational podcast all about audio equipment, music, audio engineering, recording, live sound, and epic nachos. <laughs> I was thinking just, I was just thinking, I really need to learn the intro. I mean, we've done 20 some plus episodes and you know, I still haven't got it. last week was 25, so we've uh, managed to make a quarter of the way up to episode 100 <laughs> already. That's exciting, actually. Um, so I was thinking one day I need to like, just go, when you go, okay, we're rolling, and then just do it. But and I have to, have you, know, I have you, to figure it have you uh, noticed the uh, listener numbers on patchbay.tv the last couple it's weeks? Getting better. <laughs> yeah, seriously better. I'm I'm semi excited actually. People are actually interested in in, in hearing us. So um, just as a quick note, I think I would think by this point in time, my little interview on Zombie Tech TV should be up. Yeah, it's that would have been up. up weeks and weeks ago. Uh, we're recording Which, quite a few episodes in advance because obviously I will be out of the studio, and Shane right. also has a very big project coming up, and we're not going to be able to record for a while. Yes, exactly. So we're we're trying to preempt anyway. Uh, so, yeah, I'm still. If you want to hear that. Chain talk about himself for an hour, um, ZombieTech.tv. <laughs> uh, look for his uh, interview. Addy and I interview him for an hour, and you know I do my best not to you know cut him off like I do on this show. The the, the one thing I do have to apologize for is being semi murdery about the book comment, but I was just joking around, just in case anybody's worried about me. Um, all right, so on to audio. So, do we have any more stuff to discuss about the studio upgrade situation? As it happens, um, uh, the next thing I have to do is like start hooking up uh, some of the stuff that has shown up recently, and uh, start uh, testing it in a live production environment. But uh, instead of that, what I think we should probably discuss a little bit mm -hmm. are some of the projects that I've got going. Okay, I'm excited. What's up? I mean, if there's something you wanted to talk about, that's cool too. But I've totally uh, got stuff. Yeah, you know what? Actually, at this point, nothing is really popping in my brain right now. So you shoot. If I have an idea, I'll jump forward. But anyway, so what's up? All right, so all the, all the uh, guitar cats out there are going to like drool through this whole episode. Yay! Including me, I got. Thankfully, I got a like a liter cup in front of me that I can drool into. Okay, shoot. All right, so let's uh let's start at a uh, I don't know, maybe at the amplifier. So I've got uh Leslie uh one twenty five. You familiar? I am. Yeah, actually, I haven't recorded one, but I've seen a few used. So the <laughs> Leslie one forty seven, one twenty two. Those are the ones you usually see. Uh, they have the horn on the top that spins around, and they've got the big thing on the bottom that spins around. And these are usually hooked up to organs, uh, like a Hammond B3 sort of uh, southern rock. You know, very popular with that, very popular with um, uh, um, uh, gospel music, too. Play okay. some skater, man. Yeah, so that kind of music. Uh, now, the, the 125 doesn't have the horn on the top. It just has the rotor on the bottom. And okay. I have it hooked up to one of my Hammond M3 organs. I have two of them, which are twins. They're both blonde finish. And I found a lime oak uh, uh, Leslie cabinet. And you don't come across the blonde uh, lime oak looking Leslie cabinets very often. They're very rare compared to the cherry finish. So when I found one, I got it, right? Uh, it's not exactly the right Leslie that I'd like to have, but it's... You know, it's the right color. It matches the organ. That's important. It goes with the shtick. It's and uh, yeah, it's living room quality stuff, and it sits in my living room, so it needs to look right. So <laughs> now, because I play an M3 organ, it has an amplifier built into it. It has an amplified field coil speaker in it. So I don't need the tube amp in the bottom of my Leslie 125. Mm -hmm. well, I've you had don't it for years. It, but... I don't use it. <laughs> Because the uh, the amplifier in that the organ is better, <laughs> so you know well, yeah, I have go. the the twelve inch Jensen that's in the Leslie hooked directly up to the amplifier in the organ. I have it wired that way, so I've never even uh, looked at the the Leslie Type twenty five tube amp that's sitting in the bottom of my Leslie. So what I did is I took it out, pulled it out, 
and I took one look at it, and I'm like, well, there's <laughs> good thing I didn't hook this one up. Mm-mm. <laughs> so, okay. They've got these big power resistors in it, and these are the oh. big white ceramic ones, right? Right, yeah. And which this type are, is like... Fine nowadays. Yeah, very I- impossible, really. Yeah. Um, the, These type, anyway. Uh, they're called smokestack uh, type. They're round, they're long, and they stick up through the chassis. Anyone that's looked at a tube amp knows that the, the whole chassis thing and a lot of the components stick up through the top. So this thing is a big power resistor. It gets hot. Okay, It's you know dissipating a lot of heat. And one of the two big power resistors in it is not only gone, but what's left of it is shattered and black and burnt. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that's not good. So was it uh, uh, was it getting power or was it? I have not plugged it in yet. Or you? Okay. Ever. So it was probably buggered when you picked it up. Yeah. Okay. So I, I didn't know it was busted, but it, it right. is obviously busted. So now it comes with a schematic on the side. I was able to figure out which resistor is supposed to go in there, what the wattage, mm-hmm. you know, it's supposed to be rated at. You know what the resistance, all that sort of thing, and I found a source for a uh, replacement. I can't find one that's uh, the same exact shape, a uh, round one, but I was able to find one that is square um, and has the leads on the bottom so that it can poke through the chassis, and I can just replace the old one in the circuit with it. Uh, so I should be able to repair it, and uh, that's one thing that I'm working on. Uh, the resistor actually just came today. For it, um, I may tinker with that later. We'll see. Um, mm. Also, the Leslie's had those cool old connectors, right? Uh, those big, uh, what are they Ampex? Yeah, uh, or Amphenol. Amphenol. Are, are, are they circular or yeah, they're square? They're circular. They've got the 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 circle of pins, kind of like a tube would have. Right. And the yeah. cables are really freaking big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. My yeah. my. Uh, tube, my tube mic at work has a 28 pin, no more than that. But yeah, it's the same kind of... Okay, I know exactly what you're talking about. Anyway, so okay. these really big cables are what you'd use to connect your your external speaker cabinet to your Wurlitzer organ or whatever. Um, so, you know, it's got these really cool and hard to find uh, plug sizes on it. And uh, I don't want to modify this amp. I want to interface with it. So, uh, while I was at the place that had this resistor, uh, I also picked up a couple of um, uh, the the sockets that uh, the cable can plug into, that type of cable. And I do have cable. Uh, the particular amp that I have has been slightly modified so that it has a, uh, a short cable coming out of it with one of those plugs. Okay. Wired right up to its, uh, its socket there. So... Um, there's also, uh, on the top of a Leslie amplifier, there's a little two-pin plug where the speaker normally plugs into it. The voice coil of the speaker attaches right there. So mm-hmm. I picked up one of those plugs, too, well, a reproduction of them. Um, functionally, it works the same, but it's new. Um, so now <laughs> this is a 20-amp uh, a tube amp, and guitarists mm-hmm. out there will know that tube uh watt uh 20 yeah. watt like on 40 tube is you know a very <laughs> very loud um thing it's a lot louder than what you'd get on a solid state amplifier so they claim it they claim it's double so but i don't know if i entirely believe that but i've heard a 20 watt tube amps basically 40 watt solid state yeah if not uh, more you know it's if not more it's, yeah it's, it's you don't like have to the, turn these things up very loud to get a lot of noise out of them yeah, obviously, depending on what it's plugged into as well. Like my my 15 watt champ with the 10 inch is not really that loud, but plugged into the 15 that I run it through, it's in ridiculously loud. Yeah, and it's way easier to carry around. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, they are. I mean, compared to a 15, if if you put a 15 watt tube amp versus 15 watt solid state, you're gonna blow it out of the water basically so yeah anyway so, okay. this is a, a leslie type 25 it's the early type amp for anybody who is actually familiar with these things and that means that um it has a sealed a uh, really big sealed capacitor which should still be fine 
It has three uh, really big um, transformers in it. Uh, we're talking old school electronics here, so big heavy metal. And then uh, the tubes that it uses, the output tubes are 6L6 uh, uh -oh. tubes. And the input side of things is a 1-2-AU7. Oh, that's type. different. So instead of the AX7, which you'd see in a lot of guitar amps, uh, it has the AU7. And the reason for this is that the AU7 is much lower gain. So because it's designed to attach to an organ, they don't want the crunch. No, they yeah, want it no. clean, so they don't they want, want a print. lot of gain on the first stage. Right. So this is a very clean amplifier as it sits. Now, I could make it very crunchy just by pulling out that 1-2-AU7 and throw in a 1-2-AX7. It would automatically start to overdrive the output, right? Actually, as a side note, I wonder if... Yeah, I mean, there is a way to make it switchable, right? Uh, uh, Mess of Boogies came up with amps like that where you can switch the input and output sections... To, that would be kind of nifty, although it would be a little bit of wiring, obviously, yeah, <laughs> but might be kind of cool to do. Anyway, so this is a, a, an amp that's designed to be very, very clean right out of the gate. So we're not talking about a super crunchy 5-watt tube amp like what I've got on my Alphaphone Valve Junior. This mm -hmm. is a very loud amplifier and a very clean amplifier. So uh, next part of this that... Uh, got to wrap your head around here is uh that i have uh, a 1930s jensen field coil speaker with a really big field coil on it that i pulled out of a hammond s model organ that was completely trash but the speaker was good you know very very uh, good condition now a field coil speaker does not have a magnet in it it has a giant electromagnet and to power one of these things you need to supply it like a hundred volt dc um, through the coil to have it energized to create enough magnetic flux so that the voice coil of the speaker has something to push against. Uh, this is before they invented the alloys that we now use in permanent magnet speakers. Uh, we've talked about these a little bit in the past on the show, but uh, if you've ever heard one in person, you know that it sounds much tighter than a permanent magnet speaker. It's a lot less sloppy. And mm -hmm. uh, you can wire it up in the amplifier as a choke to create a compression the, the harder you play, the more it compresses the sound, which can be very good. So this is a, a very, very good speaker. A lot of guitar cab builder guys would kill to have this sort of thing. Um, I was lucky enough to know what it was when I saw it and save it from the junkyard. So <laughs> that is part of it. And I've got the part sitting here, and I talked to John S.A.Z., which we, we were making fun of him last week at the end of the show. But uh, he's uh, retired um, uh, from Motorola. He was a manufacturing engineer for them for 25 years. So this guy knows his stuff when it comes to electronics. Yeah. So him and Mike Burr helped me design a power supply to power the field coil on this speaker so we can bring it back to life and use it as the output speaker for this Leslie amplifier. Ooh. So I think I know what it's going. Oh, no, I was going to say, I think I know what it's going into, but it's not going into that. <laughs> no, right? uh, what it's going into. And, and here's the fun bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I picked up a uh, 1936 Philco um, radio case. We may have talked about it a couple weeks ago. So that's the case that these are going in. I have the radio here now. I have the speaker, I have the amp, and it all does fit inside the radio. So nice. what I'm going to do is build a guitar amp in one of those so cool 1930s tombstone radios uh, that's going to have a nice, big, powerful 20-watt uh, tube amp in it uh, that is uh, probably going to be modified a little bit in terms of you know making it more appropriate for guitar because uh, it's super clean right now. And, uh, yeah, and a field coil speaker from the 30s as well. And I mean, and you can always, you know, if, if you have the opportunity you always build in uh you know a little fuzz box switch have to or... build a preamp into it because the leslie is expecting line level as it's in okay it doesn't have I've, a preamp in it i got schematics for um preamp i built uh, sure preamps find some but you know yeah. i've built many preamps um i the designed my I have own has a, the one that i had has a dirty switch too on it mm -hmm. so it's uh 
Oh, anyway, whatever the case is. Now, um, I've got a couple options for that. I'd love to hear what you think. I've got um, one of those little, let me see, um, an Art Tube MP. You've probably seen them. Yeah, I actually have um, two of the slightly bigger versions. I have the Dual MP, and then I have the Rack Mount, and then yeah, I, have I have that the, as well. I have the Tube Pack, which has built-in compression. Yeah, I have the one that has over OPL or whatever. Yeah, so I have both those as well. Yeah, they're, they're mine fun. are the older black ones, though. Yep, yep. I got yeah, the yours black is... ones. Old school, uh-huh. man. I wish I could do a whole record with those damn things. I actually, They sound really nice, actually. Uh, not so much yeah. the rack-mounted one, though. I don't care for it as much, but the, the little uh, dish, the little single-channel one, it sounds really good. I actually did, pardon me, I did do a record with just the two... Uh, pack and and the dual MP, but I would like to do and it was a Irish traditional kind of record, which is really good. Um, I'd like to just have eight channels of dual MPs. Although the one at my work actually started smoking one day, <laughs> so I'm guessing either the tube went or something bad wrong happened. Um, the cool thing is those old dual dual MPs. You can pick them up for like 125 bucks. Don't yep. pick them all up on me. Um, so yeah, in a perfect world, Why I think. Why do you I w- say things like this, Shane? I know I'm an idiot. Um, in a perfect world, I think I would I would just do that. Actually, um, now obviously, if you're talking to Mike preamps, there's guys who wouldn't touch those with a ten foot pole. No, but no, I don't no, care. I like the not, sound of them. Uh, they sound nice, but man, it makes they, everything sound fluffy. They don't have a very <laughs> clean gain. Let's put it that way. Yeah, you know what? Though for ninety percent of the stuff that I do. Uh, I would be a happy camper. The only thing that I would like to have is either I like to have one decent mic pre that had a few things built into it, either a Joe Meek pre or um, uh, can't think of the name off the top of my head. I've mentioned it before. Um, there's two that I've been looking at that has EQ and compression built in. So something like that for like vocals or some very, you know, but for everything else, I would love to run drums through the dual, like everything on a drum kit through the dual MPs. I would, that would be exciting to hear. <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry, totally derailed there. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so that's the basic idea. The other option uh, for building a preamp into that, I could use that tube MP that I have. I could also use one of my JFET uh, guitar preamp boards um, that I've designed. Um, yeah, that, that's definitely a possibility too. Uh, that makes it easy for me to do things like build my cool little filter, uh, my sweeping filter circuit mm-hmm. right onto it. Um, that'd make for what's really in the, what's sign. in the J fat just, uh, cause I, this is the first I've heard of the J fat. Okay, so a, a J fat is, um, uh, it's a transistor, right? So we're talking solid state here. And this particular type of transistor, the way that it functions is a little bit closer to how a tube functions um, sound-wise because it doesn't have that, you know, on-off, on-off sort of thing going. It's more um, static controlled. So, you know, as the signal goes up, more current's allowed to flow through the other side. And Mm -hmm. when it gets up to the top, it also compresses. Um, It doesn't uh, bottom out. It Mm -hmm. doesn't clip like that. It totally compresses it when it gets too too high for it. So you almost can, like an overdrive. Yeah, you of, can you yeah. can get that that more saturation type of compression sound out of a JFET than a lot of other solid state ways of doing a preamp. So if I were gonna do a solid state preamp, the JFET is probably the direction that I would go. Cause we That's... can get that same sort of um one two AX seven type of um saturation and compression out of it mm-hmm. or as close to as close to yeah as, as close as we're, we need it to get to it right yeah kind of thing. yeah cool uh and that's your own design yep neat <laughs> that sounds exciting yeah and i is built it, is one a in a little project box before and i use that sometimes between the guitar and uh the valve junior to give a little bit more crunch Mm-hmm. Uh, more crunch less volume <laughs> yes yes <laughs> that's cool um so okay so sorry uh just getting back on topic so the plan you're halfway through 
basically you're figuring out what the sound of it needs to be or how much extraneous add-ons yeah. you need or don't need. Basically. There's, there's a couple of things that I could do here. There's a couple of options. I'm also considering instead of having it be set up right out of the box as a guitar amp, instead having it uh, have a mixer on board um, with three inputs on the front. Okay, instead I like this one, so far. Because it's kind of like... It's it's designed from the the very beginnings to be of the aesthetic and the sound type for um, use with the electric Kodama band, and uh, that's a three piece band that uh, Addy I and Kumiko do. Uh, so we've got uh, cigar box guitar, or resonator guitar. Um, the I think we've talked a little bit about um, the guitar that I'm building right now. I, I don't know mm-hmm. if we have on the show yet, but uh, we'll we'll get there. I'll show you guys all that as it comes together. But uh, yeah, it's a three string guitar, and uh, so very very old school, very back porch, uh, mm-hmm. get rhythm guitar mostly, and good for slide as well. And then we've got Addy singing on Green Bullet, which is. Uh, you know, anyone who's heard one of those knows that it's perfect for doing this sort of 1930s style recording stuff. And uh, Kumi plays upright bass. So, you know, you plug those three things into that little... Uh, uh... It'd be too horrific. <laughs> it would be epic. Yeah. And then you just yeah, throw exactly. a microphone in front of it and record it. And yeah, it's more every, like every... a live performance kind of thing, right? And it's all been recorded uh, through tubes. So it, it automatically has that excellent feel to it. <laughs> yeah, and like you also that idea, get that, that compression effect out of the uh, field coil by you yeah. know, actually putting it out through the speaker and recording the speaker itself or the cabinet. And add, and add to the fact that um, uh, you know, you've got an extremely loud, clean tube amp. Uh, Thankfully, the amp. Type 25 has a nice uh, volume potentiometer built right onto the the uh, chassis. So oh, because go. it's a 20 watt amp, the first thing I'm going to do is turn it down to um, maybe uh, say 10% and then I'll label <laughs> that as 11. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the 11 I need here. <laughs> yeah. And just put a, put a, uh, uh, what do they, what do they call those things on? Uh, you know, on a, on a gas pedal, so you can only go so far. Oh yeah, yeah governor. Yeah, that's what, that's exactly it. <laughs> We're gonna govern <laughs> it to eleven. At eleven, that's as far as it goes. It will go to fifty-two, but you don't want it to go to. No. <laughs> we gotta back this thing up before we can get to eighty-eight miles an hour. <clears throat> Hopefully, people get that reference. So <clears throat> I'm I'm super excited about the project and. Here's another fun part. If you guys are interested in seeing how this goes, we're actually going to be documenting the entire process of how to do this, the theory behind it, how to be safe when you're doing it, how to mount speakers in there, how to, you know, not mess up a 70, let's say 80, 80 year old radio case to do it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, doing everything in a respectable way, not messing up the Leslie amplifier because they're very valuable and you don't want to change them if you can help it. Um, yeah, exactly. And it's not that you're planning on reselling it at any point, but no, you know, no. That. I mean, uh, adding up the, the time and the parts that go into this thing, I I could not even dream of even I would laugh at any offer under about three grand. Yeah, exactly. Because you can't, yeah, I mean, I you can't yeah. find these parts. You can occasionally find these things on eBay, and I've looked at what they go for individually. These things, and you know, you add it up, and it's you know, it's fifteen hundred bucks worth of stuff <laughs> going yeah, into yeah. it. Um, and that's just like flat eBay price. That's not you know all the research time and build time and all that sort of thing. Yeah, exactly. And then no, you I'm, add the mojo yeah. factor, and man, <laughs> yeah, mojo is is plus minus you know one hundred and fifty percent. So. No, it's just plus. Um, yeah, no way. Yeah, it, there are those certain things that will never ever leave your side, right? Yeah, it's it's one yeah. of those things that uh, it will be a uh, a showpiece of the studio here. Yeah, yeah. However, for the sake of argument, you don't want to be blowing something up anyway. Just like how I was suggesting that you know we could take apart a Commodore sixty four and you got 
a little unenthusiastic about that, but you uh, have to be respectful of things that they aren't making any more of. This I and I, I agree with you. Yes. Um, okay. Well, cool. I'm I'm excited for the said project. So you're gonna you're gonna document it with film, obviously. Yeah. And there will be episodes. Up, There's gonna be a lot of episodes of it. Um, and it's going to be all highly produced and, you know, just the interesting bits will be, you know, covered and, you know, mm-hmm. some of the theory, but not going overboard with math or anything like that. You know, just in a very, you know, kind of like we do on Patch Bay, explaining it in a way that people can understand. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that'll be, that'll be fun. I mean, I'm excited to see how it, everything turns out. I'm actually excited to see what I always like the look of stuff, you know, when it's done kind of. So yeah. that's what I'm excited to see. And and because it's kind of going with that sort of old school look and shtick, it's uh, yeah. it's good. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> we had uh, uh, this weekend we had our usual hacker space meeting and uh, I brought the field coil down there with me. And, you know, it's a uh, late 30s field coil. So it's uh, it was dirty. It was uh, grimy, rusty, you know, it was <laughs> all sorts mm-hmm. of messed up. And I spent, I don't know, half hour or whatever uh, going at it uh, with uh, various uh, tricks for cleaning it up. Mm-hmm. And now it's it's uh, all back to brand new looking. Nice. That's always a good thing. Put a little I know, bit I, of wax on called... it too. So it's it's got that nice black painted waxed look. Oh. Yeah, every once in a while, I, I, I'll have, you know, issues with somebody has issues with their pots or whatever. And, um, you know, it's, it's normally just a case. Obviously, sometimes it's helpful to, to sort of grab, um, you know, some cleaner of some sort. But normally just working the working it usually will will get rid of most of the, the crap that ends up in there, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it depends. Honestly, depends on the situation. Especially for something like this, is quite old. It probably needed some serious TLC, I would think, eh? It it, it had uh, what looked like water spots on the paint. Uh, okay. Which you'd think could sort of wash off um, with just a sort of damp cloth. But it mm-hmm. turned out that it wasn't water spots and it wouldn't wipe off at all. They just kept coming back every time you tried to wipe it down. Weird. Um, so uh, it was just, you know, the paint itself uh, needed to be taken down a little bit. So uh, very carefully and making sure not to fill it up with uh, the sheddings, uh, took some triple zero steel wool to the Mm -hmm. paint like you would do in between clear coats if you were doing a paint job and uh, use that to strip off just a microscopic layer, you know, the top layer of the paint and bring it back down to fresh paint. So after I did that and removed, very, very carefully removed all of the... uh, uh, little bits of steel wool that come loose um, mm-hmm. with uh, tack cloth. I don't know if you've ever used that. Uh, it's useful in painting as well. Uh, tack cloth has a wax on it, and it's like cheesecloth. So when you wipe it on metal that has any kind of dust or particulate on it, the particulate stays on the tack cloth and goes away from whatever you're wiping down. So I used that, and uh, I had this wonderful uh, side effect of applying a coat of wax to the paint job. So it really does look like it just came out of the paint booth um, in the 30s. Slick. Slick. <laughs> Actually, I've never worked with any of those things, but it's it, that's all good information to know for for when and if I ever get my button gear to work on a project at home. Yeah, it's uh, the sort of things that you, you pick up when you're trying to learn how to make spray paint not look like crap, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, I made sure to, uh, you know, ingest as much of the 1930s paint as possible. Um, (laughs) I'm a big fan of the Mad Hatter, heavy metals all the way. Yeah, I was going to say, so you're trying to get a, you know, a little bit of uh, a sort of 1930s experience or some karma of sorts. Yeah, I I find (laughs) that uh, heavy metal poisoning from the lead in vintage paint just helps you focus more and it enhances your musical ability. So now for Shane's dumb antidote for for near the end of the show, um, sort of along that lines, my dad was renting an office at one point a few years ago and it was right next to this big open um, lot that was all gravel. And so these these idiot kids were were doing donuts one night, 
and they they smoked the side of the building and where where he was his office was and it turns out the building had like asbestos in the walls and and shit and so um it, obviously these kids had you know sort of borrowed their mother's car without her knowing kind of a thing so they got into some wicked trouble but uh, funny long story short uh dad's working away no problem there's hazmat guys walking through his office with like half of the office is tinted you know because it's like at least up here anyway asbestos is a scary scary thing and they usually call in the uh, you know the the guys in plastic suits yep. is where he's just sitting there no problem drinking making coffee in the same room I'm like are you serious like you, you can't take a half a day off no oh, it's fine you know whatever but yeah they don't make them like that anymore i guess <laughs> mm. now anyway. there's there's another asbestos thing considering the topic came up i should let people know about this um asbestos is really bad it gets in your lungs it doesn't go anywhere yeah cancer likes to go around it um so it's really bad stuff and they used to use it for everything yeah people are under the mistaken assumption that they don't use it for anything anymore they do Mm -hmm. and the thing that they use it for all the time is brake pads on cars yes this is true So every time you're going down the road and you touch your brakes a little bit of asbestos comes off those pads and it collects on the sides of roads. Yeah. So the highest density of asbestos that you'll come across on a day-to-day basis is if you happen to be walking along the side of a road on a sidewalk or anything like that. So just be aware of that, especially if you're talking about a highway or something that has a lot of traffic or any sort of road where there's stop-and-go traffic because people are you know, tapping on their brakes constantly, there's going to be much higher levels of asbestos out there in the grass yeah and and speaking of that too uh, i've talked to a few friends of mine who are doctors and um uh they through school they would compare lungs and uh, the one guy sort of opened up a set and thought that the person must have been a smoker and um the teacher actually said it was gray not black and um it was just a city person Versus country, like people who live in the country and stay in the country have pink lungs, like basically what would be if you were a newborn kind of. Um, so despite all the pesticides and crop burning and stuff like that, it's still not the same as the density that you get from trucks, smog, crap. I mean, I, I live in a city that's, you know, obviously not as bad as some cities, but you still, it's still a daily thing. So, I mean, if you don't smoke a day in your life or yeah, it's just that like bad stuff, you can still, you it's still, and Colin and then Tim from Toronto who moved over there, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. There's the three of us. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and your boss. That's right. And, and my boss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's us three. Uh, Tim, I haven't talked to Tim from Toronto in a while, but, uh, <laughs> If I if I light up a smoke signal, I'm sure I has to have to make sure the wind is blowing to the east. Yes, and if it's blowing in your face, you use a mask, people. Yeah, you actually, that pollution, that's, even if it's of the communication type. That that's on my my email handle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think we're out of time. We are indeed out of time, but I couldn't cut that off. It was too fun. All right, All right. <laughs> you guys out there. Uh, thank you for listening. We very much appreciate it. You can find this show every week at uh, patchbay.tv. Put it online on Fridays. If you don't want to pay attention to that, you can, of course, use the RSS feed and have it automatically downloaded to your phone, your iTunes, whatever, and listen to it at your leisure. I also put them up later on YouTube if you want to go back and listen to some of the early uh, episodes. Again, that's a convenient way if you like listening at the computer. Also, there's ads on those, and uh, that helps pay the bills, helps us able to keep doing that show. We don't necessarily like doing ads, but, uh, you know, until you guys donate more money, we got to make money somehow. We got to throw the ads on every once in a while, of course. It's it's not cheap to do this stuff. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to pitch in with that, it's tymkrs.com slash donate, uh, even a buck. You know, it's, it's all helpful. So anyway, thank you for listening, everyone. Um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Later. That was a good episode.